Welcome to Determine Out Loud, our podcast series that's all about minding your business in contract management and source to pay. And now, your host, Buyer's Meeting Point owner, Kelly Barner. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this latest episode of Determine Out Loud. Today, my guest is Mark Joyce, EVP and Chief Financial Officer at CourseCentric. Welcome, Mark. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining me today. Actually, it's it's a good thing you're the, the CFO because what we're going to discuss today actually requires that sort of perspective. Uh, there was a recently released McKinsey study that shined a really interesting light on the expanding role that finance is playing in Enterwise change management today. And not only how that's changing the enterprise itself and how the functions work inside of it, but also how it is affecting the traditional responsibilities that typically fall under the role of CFO. So let me start by asking whether or not you've personally seen evidence that the role, the responsibilities and of the CFO are changing. So Kelly, I, I've been uh, CFO at, at CoreCentric for about 12 years now. And uh, I can tell you that uh, the role that I had when back in 2006 when I started uh, compared to the role I have today uh, is, is very different. Mm. I, I think it's, it's different from a couple of different perspectives. One, uh, our organization, uh, CoreCentric, has grown uh, exponentially in the last 12 years. So we're, we're a different company. Uh, we're now a, a global organization uh, where we were not back in 2006 and certainly much larger uh, with uh, 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 more employees, more revenue, more products, more services, et cetera. Uh, I think that just inherently causes change uh, in the role uh, of the CFO. Um, more important than that, or, or in conjunction with that, uh, you know, all CFO roles have changed, I think, regardless of, of uh, company that you're with. And that, that change has really gone from being, you know, the traditional numbers cruncher, you know, produce financial statements, uh, role, uh, and compliance to a role where the CFO is, is more of a strategic business partner mm. and the finance function and accounting function themselves have, have become, uh, uh, partners to the rest of the organization in providing, uh, information and data. Uh, to support uh, strategic decisions and and the, and the future of the organization as it looks forward, and and of course it's always interesting to start with the what. So clearly there has been an awful lot of of change, and as you mentioned, it's been about growth, it's been about expanding into different geographies. But I'm curious about maybe the why behind some of that change. Do you think that the majority of that change has been driven by uh, either? opportunities or competitive conditions outside of the enterprise, or has it been changes in the expectations and interests of the different functions and, and area leaders inside of the enterprise? I, well, the answer is, that it's, I think, it's a little bit of both. Okay. Uh, I think we as an organization and what we control inside have always had high aspirations of growth. Uh, and we've taken advantage of that or, or accomplished that by looking uh, to the external market and saying, what are we the best at and what's the market opportunity out there for us to capitalize on? Um, our organization has certainly changed in, in the last decade or so uh, from you know an organization that was focused uh, primarily on procurement in, in transportation industries to now being a financial uh, technology uh, business uh, that focuses on payments. We looked at one of the things that we were doing within our organization uh, for our customers and said, wow, there's a great opportunity out there in the marketplace and a great need for what we're doing uh, in processing transactions and payments. And we took that and brought it to the market, uh, recognizing that opportunity and have been uh, very successful at it. That opportunity is what has really driven our growth, both uh, uh, um, within the United States as well as uh, internationally with some of the recent acquisitions that we've done. Okay. Now, your your answer to this next question may actually have a lot to do with what you just said about the industries that you've, you've focused in in the past, as well as obviously what you offer today. Uh, have the functions that report into you as the CFO changed 
as you've gone through that growth and acquisition or has it predominantly remained the same and maybe your, your focus or your areas of, uh, of priority have shifted? So the, the, the areas that, uh, in my role as CFO, and I think generally CFOs in, in companies of our size, uh, CFOs typically have some level of responsibility, you know, not only for the traditional finance functions, but they also are involved with legal, uh, human resources, uh, IT many times, uh, M&A, uh, et cetera. Uh, within my role, uh, at various times, I've had responsibility for all of those things. Uh, but as we've grown, uh, in particular in a few areas, uh, we've shifted that around to where, you know, for, good example, in IT, our internal IT uh, support functions at one point were part of uh, the finance organization and reported uh, to me because that's where it fit at the time. As we've grown and recognizing that we're a technology company and have a lot of technology resources in the organization, it made sense for that function to really shift and uh, report to somebody who lived and breathed IT 24-7 okay. and could better uh, better manage that group. It also simultaneously provided me with the, the capacity uh, to focus more on some of those other areas uh, that were, you know, finance oriented, uh, strategic oriented, and so on, um, in order to you know, balance the, uh, the capacity across the organization. Now, if you think as someone who lives and breathes this role of CPO, certainly there's there's what we've talked about in terms of reporting and focus, expectation and, and market opportunities. But if if it was you having a discussion about these changes that you've seen with one or more CFOs that you know that you presume have gone through similar types of changes and, and maybe have a similar type of, of place that they hold in the organization. If we take this just a little bit more personally, have has your impression of how you feel in the role, how you feel as, as CFO, maybe even your perspective. So there's what you do, but then there's how you see the role and what your idea of what the role represents in terms of value to the rest of the organization. I'm sure there's been some amount of change there that's maybe your interpretation that any CFO is going to bring their own individual perspective to what they do, where they focus, or what the forward-looking path is for the role of, of CFO. Do you mind taking it a little bit more personal and talking about how you see the role and, and what you personally do to, to affect where your focus is? Sure. So my, my, where, where I see my role and, and you know, the role of the CFO, particularly in, in the core-centric organization, uh, is as a, a partner uh, to the different business leaders uh, that we have that that run their own individual functions, and you know there may be a couple of dozen of those within within our organization, uh, running various uh, divisions or or functions uh, within CoreCentric. I think the the, the role of, of the CFO is to support uh, provide that support to them uh, and provide information and data and anything that they may need so that they can best manage uh, their areas of responsibility. I think uh, also, in addition to that, uh, the role of the CFO is to be the strategic partner to the CEO, uh, the president, uh, and, and other executives as we set uh, collectively corporate strategy uh, for the organization uh, and making sure that uh, all that strategy is in alignment and then filters down throughout the organization so that we're able to you know, achieve our, our goals. When we start to think then about some of those other roles and, and whether they're C-level roles or whether they are some of the other business leaders that you mentioned partnering with in the organization, can you think of any ways that the changes that have taken place in your role as CFO or in the responsibilities that fall under finance as a whole have affected, you know, positively, negatively, or, or in between uh, their roles and how they approach their job? Yeah. So let me think about that one for a second. I, I um, so you're asking me, how, how do I think that uh, the role of the CFO is impacting the other leaders in the organization? Yeah, so for instance, as, I mean, certainly we talked about, you know, where exactly does IT report at different times, and, and that changes the organization mm -hmm. grows. There's obviously a lot of M&A activity going on as you've seen opportunities and, and made acquisitions in order to respond to that. How has 
maybe what you have on your plate or how you approach that at any given time. I don't know, approached how the CEO does his job or changed the role of who's responsible at the very top for IT in the organization. Um, what kinds of shifts are there within the C-suite? Uh, well, I hope that uh, the other, you know, within the C-suite and, and then within the other leaders of the organization, uh, that they they view uh, the the resource that the CFO provides to them uh, in terms of, uh, I'll say, knowledge uh, and and information and information about uh, you know how how we perform as an organization uh, and virtually any data point that they need to to uh, run their area of the business that they look at that as, as a resource uh, and an opportunity to, to make things uh, better mm-hmm. and, and easier for, for us to manage. Um, there's, there's a, in our organization, there's a tremendous amount of data uh, that we use to drive business decisions. Okay. And I think one of the roles of the CFO is to, you know, not only house that data, because a lot of it does flow through the finance function, but extract what's important out of that data and, and put it in a manner uh, that can be used regardless of uh, the role of the other person, be it uh, an IT role or a procurement role or a sales management role, uh, pull out the necessary data, provide it to them, and help help support the, the decision-making. So over that time, you've been, you've certainly been on a journey, right? So you've gone from <laughs> an, an area of initial focus to seeing an opportunity to expanding capabilities, expanding addressable market, um, going through a, a lot of these shifts gives you a great deal of experience along the way, right? You've, you've gone through things firsthand. So I imagine mm-hmm. that the experience you would want someone to have to step into your role tomorrow, right? Let's say the aliens come, they beam you up. Starting Monday, you're not there, right? So (laughs) very unusual. Nothing bad happens to anybody, but we have to figure out who's going to step into your shoes on, on Monday. The qualifications that you had to step into your own role on your day one, I imagine would therefore be very different than the experiences and background and qualifications you would want someone to have to step into, uh, you know, your shoes left empty on Monday morning. Mm -hmm. How would you talk about the impact that some of the the changes in finance and in the CFO role have had on the career path that people need to take both to get to that point where they're qualified and then to be successful once they're actually in the role. Okay, so I think that, uh, you know, I, I start to think about the team that, that we have here and and as I look at the people that, that come into the in, into our organization at more of an entry level and, and look at how they progress through, mm-hmm. you know, that entry level role and, and what it takes to, to move on to the CFO. And I think there's obviously, you know, being responsible for a finance function, obviously there, there's some basic finance skills, accounting skills, mm-hmm. you know, type things that, that are necessary. But when I, I think it goes beyond that, I think that right now in the role of the CFO, you know, we've talked a little bit about this, that being able to interpret data, uh, deliver that data in a, a manner that's useful is, is critically important uh, and, and being able to listen to, to the feedback so that, uh, you know, we can we can make those decisions. I think that as, as people progress through their year, their careers and start to think about, you know, becoming a CFO in an organization, I think a broad range of uh, experiences is critically important. Uh, you mentioned it, uh, you know, it's, it's experience with, with not only accounting and finance, it's experience with human resources, and, and uh, it's experience with IT, it's experience with uh, M&A activities. And there are all types of, of ancillary uh, add-ons to those, uh, you know, legal insurance uh, and so on, um, that, that typically fall under the role of the CFO. Uh, I, I think it's, it's knowing uh, enough knowledge about all of those things uh, that really puts somebody in the position uh, of being, uh, having that opportunity to be a CFO and then being, being pretty good at it when they get there. So where the role has transitioned from being right, traditional old school number crunching financial statements to being this far more expansively rounded there's you said technology, there's analytics, there's certainly a people side to things, right? Being able to handle things. 
it, it sounds like just to generalize, you know, you, you kind of have to be good at a lot of different things. So if someone mm-hmm. were working their way up through their career and they were making a conscious effort to get experience in a lot of these different areas so that they have a number of options, any time an opportunity to step up a rung comes along, how might someone who's good with people, creative, analytical, comfortable with technology, know that finance is the right path forward for them versus a leading role in HR or a leading role in, in IT? What's the piece that should really stand out so that somebody with that solid, broad business foundational background knows that, but you know what, where I can make the greatest impact despite all this stuff is actually in finance? I think it's a, a desire to impact, to have a, I mean, let me rephrase it. It's a desire to have a role touching many different aspects of the organization. Uh, because I, I think in finance is, is one of those roles where you, it's such a broad role nowadays that you're touching so many different things. And we mm-hmm. talked about, you know, what those different things are. You're also interacting with all the different areas of the business. So you get a very broad view of virtually everything that's going on because there's not anything that happens in an organization that you know somehow doesn't have a, a pass through uh, through the finance department. Mm-hmm. Somehow it just always seems to be touched there. Um, I think the, the, the one thing too that uh, people have to have a, a passion for to, to do that is uh, I think it's an opportunity uh, in finance to, to really get involved in a lot of different things, including you know the forward thinking and forward looking area of the business, uh, which is something that's really evolving lately in the finance function, uh, is going from, you know, look, producing numbers and looking backwards and say, Hey, what did we do last month to developing a a knack for saying, okay, I know what we did last month. What are we going to do next month? And the month after that and the quarter and the year after that, that's what I think the role of finance is really evolving to. And it's that passion to, to get involved in those things, uh, that I think really, uh, causes somebody to want to be in the finance area. Well, and that idea of, of either figuring out what is going to come next or developing a vision for what you want to cause to happen next. I mean, I think that's the sort of thing that, you know, not to diminish tactics, but in most cases, a well-trained, qualified, effectively supported person, basically anybody can execute. But the creativity mm-hmm. and the vision and the thought required to figure out what's next that is incredibly hard. It can be exhausting. And it's, it's not, let's say, a, a game of one, right? There's a lot of collaboration. There has to be a lot yep. of brainstorming <laughs> and back and forth. Um, I'll, I'll take by your laugh that you've been there. This is not a, you know, a person's vision of one. Where do you get your inspiration for that? You know, are you an avid reader? Do you draw from business journals? Do you stay on top of maybe leading practices in, in other industries and think about whether they apply to your own? Are you actively involved in, you know, executives groups? Cause it's, it's hard to just, you know, sit in a nice quiet room and say, okay, what do I think is going to happen next? You need this constant stimulus input, things you agree with, things you disagree with. Where do you look to for, for the inspiration that fuels ideas or suspicions about what's next? I think it's a little bit of everything. Um, you know, there, there, I do participate in, in, you know, executive leadership groups, uh, that have regular meetings. I think it's having discussions with colleagues within core centric. Uh, it's, uh, and that, that means at all levels at the executive level, uh, and, and at all levels in the organization, because everybody has ideas and different yeah. perspectives. Uh, I think it's, it's reading, it's, it's, uh, talking, uh, and, and probably the most important thing, and this is a little cliche, but it's listening. It's listening to what other people's ideas are, uh, and, and saying, okay, how does that relate to, to our organization and whatever, uh, strategy that we may be, uh, exploring or, or trying to implement? I think, uh, one of the great things that, that we do within our organ, own organization is have the ability to bring groups together and really have a collaborative discussion of saying, hey, here's what we're thinking about doing. 
let's talk about this and, and decide, you know, what's the best strategy to, to accomplish our goal going forward. Not necessarily what's my strategy or somebody else's individually. You may start at that point, but it's really a collaborative opportunity to, to share ideas and come up with the best answer. So it's, uh, to answer your question, it, it's, it's a little bit of everything uh, because everything shapes, uh, uh, you know, the, the next step. Thank you, everyone, for listening. And be sure to look out for our next episode of Determine Out Loud. In that episode, we'll conclude our conversation with Mark Joyce by discussing an evolved CFO's perspective on procurement and how the whole enterprise can benefit from taking an investment mindset. Mindset.